Yo guys! So I want to share with you a couple of the apps that I use on Linux practically every day. So if you're a regular Linux user, you probably know that you can open up Terminal and type in top to see all your running tasks. While this is cool and convenient, I don't really like it. Instead, I prefer to use an app called HTOP. So HTOP basically makes the top console more attractive and more colorful. It allows you to sort by different stats, as well as giving you a graphical view of all the real-time updates. It's really cool, and you should definitely check it out. So my second favorite app for Linux is called Visual Studio Code. And this is like the Notepad++ for Linux. So I mainly use this for web development, but it supports a large variety of different languages. Visual Studio Code was really helpful when I was working with Jekyll because it also has support for HTML liquid tags, which not many editors have support for. And in addition, what I like is that there are a large amount of different plugins and extensions they can install within Visual Studio Code. So right now I have the Git extension so that I can send commits right to Git. And I was also using the Jekyll extensions when I was working with Jekyll. But you can search a marketplace for any extension you want to find and easily install it. So I find it a little bit ironic that this is a product from Microsoft, but it works so well on Linux and it is cross-platform so you can download it on Windows. But if you're doing any type of code editing, I highly recommend that you download Visual Studio Code. It's easy to get going and it's just very useful to have. The next app on my list is called Redshift. And this is essentially the flux for Linux. So Redshift is not as easy to get started or easy to set up as Flux. If you want everything to work automatically, you're going to have to go in and modify some scripts and add some things here and there. I have not done that. I have just been toggling it on and off manually, but it still does what I need it to do. Now I do think the red gets a little bit too dark for my liking, but I think this is really the only app that tends to screen and actually works on Linux. I actually tried the official Flux for Linux and it didn't work, so I've just been sticking with this one. The fourth app on my list is called Ghostwriter. So this is a little bit different than Visual Studio Code. This is not a code editor. This is just a markdown editor. So if you're a writer, you probably know what markdown is. Basically, it's another style of writing documents or basically writing anything on the web. You can see it a lot on GitHub documents or GitHub readmes. They all use Markdown. So when I was working with Jekyll, all the posts would be in Markdown and I use Ghostwriter. What I like about Ghostwriter is that it has distraction free writing. So it's just so comforting to look just at the text you're writing and not get distracted by anything else that's on the screen. So this fifth app is not really an app, but a dependency they can download as part of the Linux distribution. And basically, it's a package that allows you to read your sensors within the terminal. It's really convenient because I'm always curious about what my CPU temperature is, and just being able to open up terminal and type in sensors, it'll show me all the data that I need to see. So I'll definitely provide a link to the little package and dependency they can install to get this up and running. All right, the final app on my list is called Kazam. And this is an app that you can use to record your screen. You can also record your mic along with recording your screen, record sections of the screen, or even take screenshots. And I actually used this on my Chromebook running Crouton and it also worked. So I highly recommend Kazam if you're doing any type of screen recording and it keeps the file size really small. So guys, this has been some of my top favorite Linux apps that I use every day. Tell me which one was your favorite in the comments below. If you liked this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to go and follow me on social media. And as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another galvanizing video. Thanks.